Good afternoon. On behalf of the Mekong River Commission, it gives me great pleasure to give this address to the promotion of community resilience against plastic pollution and climate change in the Mekong River Basin. I must first apologize for not being with you live physically due to my prior commitment. But I'm very happy and thankful to the UN Environment Program for organizing this final stakeholder workshop of the Mekong River Plastic Project, a project that the MRC Secretariat and our member countries have provided major contributions through our collaboration with UNEP, through MOU, as well as with the Secretariat for the Convention of Migratory Species, or CMS. As we know, the Mekong River Basin Networks system provides abundant resources that support the livelihoods of over 70 million people of the basin. Indeed, it is home to over 1,100 fish species, making it one of the most biodiverse rivers in the world. It is also a significant river and waterway for navigation, for producing rice and harnessing energy, all positively contributing to the economies of the region. But the Mekong is under multiple threats. As the basin has gone rapid economic development and urbanization, plastic has found a variety of way into our lives because it is relatively low cost, lightweight, durable, and malleable. As a result, the Mekong River has been classified by one study as being in the top 10 of rivers worldwide that carry over 90% of plastic waste into our oceans. This has led to a growing concern by the Liberian countries, the members of the Mekong River Commission, Cambodia, Lao Pdr, Thailand, and Vietnam, on the potential effects, negative effects, of plastic debris and pollution on our river and its freshwater fauna. So with partners, including UNEP and CMS, we have initiated the Mekong River Commission Riverine Plastic Monitoring Program with two key objectives. One is to assess the basin-wide status and trends of riverine plastic waste pollution, and two, to generate data, information, and knowledge to support decision-making on the reduction and management of land-based and riverine plastic pollution. Through this initiative, we have carried out a first-ever basin-wide regional study. It estimated that the amount of plastic waste produced by our four Liberian countries in 2020, for example, was 8 million tons per year. 8 million tons. According to findings from our field surveys along 12 major ports and piers of the Mekong, approximately 70 to 90 percent of riverine waste accumulated at these locations are plastic types meaning plastic bottles, plastic bags, styrofoam, make up a great proportion. So the regional report encompassing both primary and secondary data collection uh, has now been published and has provided much needed uh, knowledge in terms of how to tackle this issue. And it is now published on the MRC website and portal. In addition, we have initiated the development of the Mekong Basin specific methodology for long-term and cost-effective monitoring of riverine plastic debris pollution, covering not only riverine macro and microplastic in waters, but also microplastic pollution in fish. The detailed riverine plastic monitoring methodology Integrating lessons learned and insights from both wet and dry seasons of last year has now been finalized. Preparation works are now starting with the support of Germany, among others, to strengthen the capacity of our member countries for the long-term monitoring of riverine plastic debris 
This, we hope, will generate comparable and reliable uh, long-term monitoring data that can, use, that can be used to support basin-wide assessment and decision-making on the management and reduction of plastic waste in the Mekong. And I would like to note that this will be the first large river basin specific methodology in the world for monitoring river and plastic debris pollution. Dear friends, we have to do our part, small and big things to fight the scourge of plastic pollution. Studies, assessment, monitoring would provide needed info for better decision making, better management of plastic but so are the little things. For example, at DMRC, we have already implemented a no single-use plastic bottling regime at meetings and events. And we have launched several times a campaign, Let's Act Green for a Greener Mekong, to raise awareness about plastic waste and what to be done and not to be done. So my question to you is, what are the small and big things that you are doing. Are you part of the problem or part of the solution? So the Mekong belongs to everyone. Our oceans belong to everyone. It is our, it is our collective duty and responsibility to conserve them while harnessing their potential for growth. I thank you very much, and I hope the meeting is very successful.